So guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out this cool integral, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 all the way up to x plus n. Uh, we're going to use a few different methods here and uh, we're not going to get a very clear answer but um, it's going to be pretty cool to be able to get it into a condensed form. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to um, talk about what's called the cover-up method. Now the cover-up method is a method to do partial fractions. So let's say you have a partial fraction de decomposition with some q of x on the top and p of x on the bottom and x minus a also on the bottom. Now p of x can be basically anything, but this is going to tell us what the factor, or uh, what the when you're going to do the partial fraction de decomposition, you're going to end up with a over x minus a plus b over x minus b, etc., etc., etc. But we actually don't care about any of the other terms. We're just going to find a quick way to find the general formula of x minus a, of the this a right here. So what we're going to do is we have all this other stuff, right? What we're going to do is we're going to multiply on the top and bottom or on both sides by uh, x minus a. So we're going to end up with just q of x minus over p of x equals a plus blah, 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 all those other terms times x minus a. And then we set x equal to a. And since all of this doesn't have a factor in the bottom of x minus a, that's why we took out that linear factor, this is going to go to 0. And this is just going to become q of a over p of a. And so basically what this means is that when we're doing partial fraction decomposition, and we're splitting something up into partial fractions, if we have a linear factor, we can just plug in the value which makes the linear factor 0 into everything um, in the original expression except for the linear factor, and that's going to give us our um, our constant that we're going to, or not our constant, our uh, coefficient of that linear factor. So let's go ahead and apply this to our integral. So first we're going to do the partial fraction decomposition of this whole thing, which is, I'm going to use pi notation, which is just to in indicate a product. Pi from, uh, we'll use k equals 0 to n of x minus k or x plus k actually. And so as you can see, if we set k, uh, if we set n equal to 2, then we'll have x plus 0 or x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 and so on and so forth. And so this is going to equal the sum from k equals 0 to n of a, k, a sub k over x plus and so we're just splitting up all those different factors. And now all we have to do is calculate a sub k. Well, if we look at what we did before, we know that a sub k is just going to be 1 over pi of k equals, uh, I guess I have to use a different letter. Well, basically what it's going to be is it's just going to be the product um, of all those other linear factors other than this one, other than the one including k on the bottom. So uh, basically, that's what's gonna what it's gonna be is a sub k equals one over pi. Now I'm gonna use a different letter. I equals zero to n of so our x value here is gonna be negative k and then plus i. So I'll just write that as i minus k. And so that's kind of some weird notation, but if we just go ahead and do an example, for example, we have one over x, x plus one, x plus two then that's going to be the sum of a k over x plus k. So for example, a um, 0 would equal the sum, or it would be 1 over the sum, I guess, 1 over the, the product, 1 over the product from i equals 0 to 2 of i minus 0, of just i. Oh, one thing I need to notice uh, note here is that this will give us the product of the all the linear factors in the bottom, but remember that we do have to ignore the linear factor of uh, where i equals k. So for i, e i equals 0 to n, discluding i equals k. So uh, 
i is not equal to 0. So that's just going to be 1 over pi i equals 1 to 2 of just i, which is just going to be 1 times 2 or 1 half. And so that's what that would be in that situation. And if we just did it the normal way, all we need to do is plug in 0 into this expression without the x, and you can see that it would be 2. So that's just to clear up um, that kind of confusing notation. So now what we're going to do is, so we can write, we can rewrite our sum right here. k okay, equals 0 to n of, I'll put the pi on the top. So I'll put pi i equals 0 to n, 1 over i minus k, right? times 1 over x plus k. All right, so this is our sum. Now one thing I want to do here is I want to try and simplify this right here. Uh, I forgot also here, i is not equal to k. So let's think about all of our terms where i is less than k. So for i is less than k, i minus k is going to be a negative number. Also, since i goes from 0 to um, k, but it's not going to include k, that means it's going from 0 to k minus 1, right? 0 to k minus 1, which is a total of k terms. And what that's going to be is the first term is going to be negative k, and then we're going to have um, negative, we're going to have 1 minus k, and then we're going to have 2 minus k, all the way up to the term where it would be k minus k, which we don't include. So what I'm going to do here is this is a total of k terms, as we said. So I'm going to factor out negative 1 to the k. And then these factors are going to be k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 all the way down to the term that we get, which is k minus k minus 1 or just 1. And so, as you can see, just for the numbers where i is less than k, this bottom part is going to be negative 1 to the k times k factorial. Now, let's consider the terms where uh, i is greater than k. When i is greater than k, the first term is obviously just when i is 1 more than k, and so that's going to be 1. And then the next term is going to be where i is 2 more than k, and that's going to be 2. And then we're just going to keep going until i reaches n. And so the last term is going to be n minus k. And so this is pretty simply just n minus k factorial. So overall, this sum right here just evaluates to negative 1 to the k, k factor, or sorry, not this sum, this product, uh, times n minus k factorial. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And now let's go ahead and remember that in the original problem, this whole thing was integrated from 1 to infinity dx. Okay, actually, I, I was a little bit incorrect. So it's not always going to be okay to exchange the sum and the integral, because as you can see, these, this integral is always going to be um, infinity. So we'll keep... Okay, so we'll... We can still take the integral without plugging in the bounds, but we'll just we'll leave this on the outside here. And so basically this is going to be sum from k equals 0 to n, negative 1 to the k over k factorial, n minus k factorial, times ln absolute value. Actually, I don't need the absolute value because this is always positive on the domain that we're looking at. x plus k, evaluated at infinity and 1. Now, the problem here, the 1, 1 is relatively easy to uh, determine. It's just going to be ln k plus 1. The problem is, at infinity, this ln term goes to infinity. Now, uh, I'm going to make one quick assumption here, and I'm going to assume that the integral will always converge, first of all. So, uh, except for the case where n equals 0, the integral is always going to converge, because, as you can see, um, pi of k equals 0 to n of x plus k, you know, is like x, x plus 1, x plus 2, etc., 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 is always greater than or equal to x to the n, right? As long as um, x is greater than or equal to 0. And that means that the sum from k equals 0 to n of 1 over x plus k is always less than or equal to 1 over x to the n. So if we integrate both sides from 1 to infinity, this equality will still hold true. 
and clearly this integral on the right will converge as long as n is equal to 1. And so basically, we know that this integral is always going to converge. So we have to assume that the coefficients of ln x plus of all these different terms of ln will cancel. And this is definitely true. You can plug in a few examples with just the most simple integrals, but I'll just go ahead and tell you that they will always cancel. So for infinity, we're just going to have some big term of all the ln x's combined, and it's going to eventually just end up having to be ln of 1, which is just 0. So this infinity 1 is not going to matter. And at 1, we can just plug in 1 right here. And since we're subtracting the lower bound, we can put a negative sign right here. And this is actually our final answer. Uh, it's not exactly the most simple answer, but we can plug in a few examples and see that it does work. So let's go ahead and test the example of integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x times x plus 1. Of course, we can do all this partial fractions, but let's just plug in our sum. This is going to be negative, and then the first term of our sum is going to be 1 over, in this case, n is 2, so k factorial, k is 0, so this is just 1, and then we have 2 factorial, and then we're going to have ln of 1 plus k, but k is 0, so that's just going to be 0. And then we're going to now um, have a positive term because that negative 1 to the k, k is now 1. And so the, it's going to be plus ln, it's going to be ln 2 over, and then in this case k will be 1, so it's 1 factorial times 1 factorial, and so this is just going to be ln 2. And so that should be our answer, right? And let's go ahead and check using partial fractions. And you can see that our answer did in fact match. So that's a pretty cool answer. You can check it for other values and this will hold up. So that's definitely a really quick way to evaluate this relatively complex integral. But yeah, uh, I think it works out pretty well. It's a nice generalization for a pretty cool integral. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.